Hey guys, just uh, getting settled here. Sorry about the lateness here. It's 11.02 Pacific Standard Time here on Vancouver Island. Hey everybody, oh, it's a little low. Just gonna try and boost this up a bit and get some people on. We're gonna be doing a coffee table makeover. This guy right here, just finished sanding it actually. And just wanna make sure the videos pop up. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. I'm uh, just going to wait for a couple people to join and just going to show you what we're going to be working with today. Got my products and my brushes ready. Going to be using cranberry sauce. Oops, this is a little crooked, isn't it? Um, sanded off the top there just now. So I'll show you guys just a little, some prep tips here. We're going to be working on this. I'm very excited. This is my mother's table. Um, she wants a nice cranberry sauce with glazes and a nice satin finish at the end. So this is probably going to be a two-parter. Um, I sanded it off with my handy orbital sander. Apologies, just getting my stuff sorted. Um, in case you haven't seen any of these videos before, I'm Mary from Country Sheet Paint. Uh, be sure to check out any of those past ones. Sorry about that, volume was on. <laughs> um, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more updates. And uh, let's just get started with this video too. Um, it's been sanded. I've got my cranberry sauce and I've got my vinegar. And I'm going to be just giving it uh, a little quick clean over because I did vacuum out all of the sand, but it might still have some remnants left over. So I've got my cloth, water, and all you need is just a dollop of vinegar. This is just a really nice natural way of cleaning a piece. Um, on our prep guide, just step one, clean the piece. You don't know where, especially if it's a thrift find, if it's a used piece of furniture, you want to make sure it's nice and clean. There might be some cobwebs underneath, be sure to vacuum those out. Um, so just the mild solution, dust this all off here. And I did sand right into the crevices because I want to do a red face and a stained top. And we can use the Country Sheet Paint glazes to do that. Works like a charm. And sanded off all of my spindles too. I wanted to make sure that I had a nice clean start. Um, it had a little bit of a light stain on it that came off really easily with a 180 grit paper. I used my DeWalt Orbital Sander. These guys are about 60 to 80 bucks at a hardware store. Definitely handy if you're doing multiple pieces. Um, if if you're doing like a whole bedroom set, highly recommend if you have to sand anything. Um, if you're just tuning in, let me know where you're coming from. I always love to hear and see where everyone's watching from. Let me know if you've seen any of the videos before. And if you've ever used uh, cranberry sauce. This is a really nice berry red. Um, we've got a couple others that I can show you to compare. Oh, we got Virgit. Hey, how are you? Um, where's my paint the town? So just a comparison because we do have two similar reds. I would say this one is more of a Christmassy barn red. So this is called paint the town. It's a it's a very very pretty red. Um, and then we've also got cranberry sauce, which is what I'm going to use. Now this one has a bit of a pink tone to it. It's a tad different from what I don't know if you can see from the difference there. A color card is always really handy to have if you're not too sure. Oh, let's keep it paint free on the top. So I did the quick wipe down. Um, you might recognize this piece. Um, it's a similar, it's very popular. Uh, it's called a fife with a P. So it's got a, it's got a fancy name to it. It's from a old American um, furnishing company that is probably no longer in business, unfortunately. Um, but they made some beautiful European stuff and we're going to dress it up today. So I'm uh, just gonna start off now that I've sanded. I want to put on a couple light coats of Country Chic Paints Cranberry Sauce. This keeps falling down on me. And I'll come in a little closer so you guys can Oh, sorry, it looks like we lost connection. Apologies. Um, so these are some very nice fancy feet that we want to protect. I do want to get my tape and just make sure that I've protected those. I don't want to get paint on them. Um, you, could, I, you could always use like a metallic cream to update those, but I do like the tarnished look that they've got right now. I just want to make sure that's really on there. 
I've decided to start with the top first, um, or the bottom first, sorry. You don't have to, you can stain your top, then paint the base, but I like to do the base first and then just do the top last. It's easier to touch up that way. No real rhyme or reason. Just make sure you protect um, the top from the bottom if you're painting and vice versa if you've decided to switch. Paint your stick is your friend. Makes a nice clean edge when you're done. And just gonna mark that off. Perfect. So I've got uh, two applicators here. Um, oh, we got somebody from BC. Hey, hey, I'm from BC. Oh, South Carolina too. Nice, thank you. So I've got two applicators here. I have the oval brush from Country Chic Paint. Very handy. This is the 1.5 size. And then we've got the handy painting sponge. This has been used on several projects already. Um, you use it for primer, paint, even the top coat. Um, I do plan on using this for tough coat all over when I'm done. Uh, it's a great way to seal things. So I'm just going to go in with the first coat. Here's that berry red. This is cranberry sauce. This is a little four ounce sample. Um, it's about halfway through, so I might need a bit more, but I'm just doing the base. I bet you I can cover it. Um, thin coats is best, and you might want to let your first coat dry for a couple of hours, maybe two, just before going on to the second. But I might do a second coat here just because we're doing a live video. So I've got to go real thin for that. In the sunroom, it looks very pink. I don't know if you guys are seeing a very pink red, but I love it. Um, we had a color called Perfect from a pet collection, so it was perfect, lots of R's, very cute. Um, I'd say this is a very similar color, but definitely more red. And that was a limited edition, and this is a permanent collection color. Love it. So these lines are just gonna be filled with graphite glaze pretty soon, and they're gonna look really nice. And I did lightly sand all over. Um, I couldn't use the orbital sander on these details, of course. I would wreck them. Um, if you have one of those very fancy tiny ones, that works. If it's powered, um, or just good old sandpaper does the trick, which is what I used for this one. It uh, doesn't quite get all the grooves, but that's okay. You could use a paint stripper if you really wanted to make sure all of that varnish was gone, um, especially if you're wanting to do a bleach look. You might want to be very thorough with removing any past coatings. So um, you could use citrus strip. That's one that I've heard used. Oops, making a mess here. It's very, it's rather eco-friendly, probably one of the safer ones. Um, but we recommend sandpaper just for basic refinishing. Has anybody worked on a piece similar? Um, anybody wanting a red coffee table in their house? Curious how common these are. Um, I did two nightstands in this exact same method that I'll be doing. Um, my mom loved it so much she wanted to see something like that in her house. So I'm just redoing what I did before for somebody. Red sells really well here on the island. Um, a lot of eclectic purchasers. Anybody else like a good red? Let me know. Rosie from Manitoba, thanks for tuning in. Oh, uh, looks like I didn't turn the notifications off, sorry. One moment here. Okay. Um, I think I will save the spindles for my painting sponge, um, but I'm gonna do the legs on the other side. And then I think we have time to do the basic staining of the top with some glazes. I wanna show you just the regular application for glaze over a top. Furniture glaze is one of our products that works great over paint and over um, raw wood and just makes for a very nice finish, takes the piece to the next level. I feel like it on this one. And get the back leg. Um, I'm going to be using smoky quartz and graphite glaze and these are going to really change up the color. It won't be um, so bright. So if you find you do like the bright look but you want to tone it down just a little bit or add some antiquing effects, I definitely try a glaze. It is a water-based product. It's not quite like our waxes. It'll be runnier than paint. But the best part about glaze is you can put a water-based top coat over top um, where you might not be able to with a wax because those are oil-based. 
and I want to seal this for extra durability. Is it is a coffee table top, and my mom does a lot of heavy wear and tear on her pieces sometimes, so really want to make sure. And I'm gonna be using tough coat right over the paints and the glaze. And I think that will be for part two because you do have to give it some time to dry. Just getting in behind here. First coat always goes on just a tad patchy, but that is okay. Um, let it dry for a little while, again, maybe, maybe an hour or two before you go on to the second coat. If you find that your second coat is coming right up as you're painting, so let's say like I just want to paint, but it's wiping away on me really easily, give that um, some time to dry because you might just be waiting, um, not waiting long enough. It's very warm in my house right now where I'm painting from. So paint will dry a lot quicker in a warm spot, above room temperature. Um, if you're painting in a cold space or it's winter and you're in your garage, be prepared to wait just a little bit longer for your paint layers to dry. But uh, it's May right now, not experiencing that problem. Hopefully nobody else is too, really. Hope we got some spraying everywhere. I want to show you really quickly what this neat painting sponge can do. You just uh, you want to keep it clean. You don't want lint to collect in it, so put it in a nice clean drawer if you can. Just a little bit on the ends. If you are doing um, a project, this will be thinner coats, of course, so it won't quite look like the brush strokes. If you're doing like a railing, um, stair, stair railings, highly suggest this. Um, if you have a whole kitchen table set of chairs to do, Grab yourself a, a sponge. <laughs> it's, it, it's easy, it keeps it from collecting the crevices. You don't lose those nice pretty details. You might find that you have to do one extra coat, but you know what, it adheres so well and so quickly, it should be just fine. And I'm just gonna go in from behind. Get the tops here. Let me know what you guys think so far in the comments. We're gonna let this dry a little bit and jump to the top and I'm gonna stain it with our glazes so I'll show you a quick demonstration of that. Uh, but I just want to get the base of this dealt with. The second coat will really darken and show, give you a better preview of what the end result will look like. a little tricky getting in between so just make sure maybe come back when some things have had some time to dry so your hands aren't brushing over top don't want to overwork anything and don't forget the bottoms just in case we flip the table over I'll get those when that's dry Sponge just gets right in there. It's perfect. So significantly thinner coats with a sponge, but they do dry a lot faster. And again, you can use the sponge um, from priming if you had to, painting, and even sealing with a water-based top coat. So very handy, kind of a one uh, multi-use thing. And if you're going for an ombre effect, Definitely try the sponge, because that makes it a lot easier sometimes than a brush. Okay, so really quickly tackled that. It is, it's kind of like a raspberry, yeah. Um, redoing your office in cranberry. Oh, every piece? That's really cool. All right. So I think I'm going to prop it up so you can see the top. And get a little closer so you can just see what's going to be happening with that. So um, those patches is just water, not to worry, didn't do a bad job sanding. <laughs> um, started out with the orbital doing 80 grit because this was very thick, um, I should probably wash my hands before doing the sanding. Um, it was very thick and I think there was quite a few coats of it on there. So I started off with the 80 and then went to 180 to smooth it out. You don't want to use too coarse of a grit otherwise it will scratch up your finish and when you paint over you might see those scratches especially if you find you see 
the swirl look from a sander. Just be careful with that. Um, always keep it clean, dust it off. So with glaze, what you're going to want is a dish of water. You're going to want a brush, which I'm just looking for a second one here. And I think I'm going to start off with Smoky Quartz. That's the nice neutral brown. Um, to relate it to our waxes, it's similar to antiquing graphite. Um, this is a nice brand new one. I can't wait to jump in. Um, it has been sitting for a while, so I just got to make sure I shake them. Graphite is the darker one. It's just going to settle over top really nicely. Oh, cherry blossom. So Mary has ordered cherry blossom. <laughs> Not sure what you're thinking. Oh yeah, definitely add just a bit. I think I remember you talking about that, Mary. Um, thanks for watching, by the way. Um, yeah, if you if you find you want to darken up the tone, like let's say this is too pink for you, maybe add a little bit of licorice to it. Uh, that's our black that will darken it up a bit. Um, you can even get creative if you have another dark neutral, uh, say like dark roast even, might warm it up a bit. Um, definitely, a lot of things you can try to tweak the color. Okay, so I kind of want to have a wet brush just to make this go on a little easier. And I'm just going to go across because I want to go with the grain. It'll look a bit more natural. Um, the rustling is my cat. He's found a bag. Apologies. That'll probably go on for a while. <laughs> You don't have to be crazy exact. It doesn't have to be um, solid and wet all the way through. You can leave a little bit of patches because you are wiping off the excess with a damp cloth. Um, depending on the wood and the project you're working with, if you it, glaze works best if you're doing a natural top. Um, if you sand or strip down to the bare wood, it does need a porous surface to really grab onto. So when you wipe it away, you're left with that beautiful, slightly darker wood grain. It just embeds. It looks natural. Um, Thomas, no scratching. Thank you. Um, <laughs> he knows I'm live. That's great. Um, definitely might end up with a slightly different look um, than what you see on Pinterest. Maybe somebody who's working with uh, raw pine. This is a darker wood. I've sanded as much as I could and it's still a little dark. So it might not look quite the same as another uh, stained top that I may have done in the past, but it's still going to look really, really nice because there is some nice wood grain. And I'm just going to stop halfway through maybe. No, I'm going to go all the way really quickly. You want to work in sections. So if you find that it's um, drying up on you on one side, quickly wipe it off. Um, you don't want to end up with that tacked look where the product was overworked as it dried. So you want to work a little quickly for a nice natural finish. You want it to softly wipe away. You don't want to get stuck when you're brushing off. Um, where's that other? You do want a lint-free cloth. So unlike the rag that I was using, um, I'm going to want one of these. This is just a lint-free uh, dishwasher or dishwashing cloth. And I've got my cup of water here. No vinegar, don't need that. All right, oh, hey Kathy from Texas. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry I'm not in the shot. I just really wanna make sure you guys see what's all going on here. So that's, it comes off a bit. You're not wasting a lot. A little of glaze does go a long way. I just, I want the top to match the bottom. I want to use glazes that have the same tone that I'll be using over top of the piece. So there wasn't really anything wrong with the top, but I want it all to kind of go with my Country Sheet Paint products. And glaze just leaves such a nice finish. So it is wet, it will dry a little differently in a moment. Um, we got to let that sit. If I was to put anything else on top, it might just keep rubbing it off. So I do have some time maybe to touch up some bottom coats of paint, um, quite possibly, maybe. Oop. All right, I'm gonna move some of my clutter here. And if you want, uh, for the finer details, you can always go in with a little artist brush. So something like here in the corners, or maybe these legs. Always use a little artist brush if you need to. Oh, um, where's my smoky quartz? I forgot to do the sides. Sorry about that. We are going to stain the sides. That's important. Missed it completely. Okay. Just going to go in from the front here. 
So I did sand as much as I could. There is still some of that original stain. I'm okay with that. Um, you might find it's pretty tricky to sand that off just with some paper and your patience. Um, you might want to use a paint stripper um, where you just kind of lay the liquid on and it peels it right off with a putty knife. There's always those solutions. Um, but it is going to work for me. Graphite will kind of be similar to that dark color, but I'm going to put a couple more coats on. You want to build up the coverage. The first coat might not be all you need. You might want to add a bit more. And get the sides here. And the side. Definitely be careful when you're sanding these edges that you don't remove all the detail or change the shape too much. Um, just a nice 180 grit should probably take care of most stains. 120 if it's tough. So that's just a little bit. Have to let the glaze dry to see how dark it got before I apply the second coat. Yeah, it's pretty handy. Um, it doesn't Glaze works best again over the raw wood, not quite over a stained finish already. So if you're wanting to just slightly alter what you have, um, you might want to sand back and recreate that entirely. And I do want to share a little shot of the window there, sorry. The coupon, uh, we've got another code to share for 10% off the website if you're interested. This code is good till May 28th. And it is just simply Cranberry 10, or Cran 10, I can read, Cran 10 for 10% off countrysheetpaint.com or .ca. You don't have to get cranberry sauce, but definitely worth it if you're wanting to do a similar project here. I'm just going to apply a quick second coat over the spots that have dried for me. See if we can make this color pop a bit more. And I think I will go over just the front of this. Make sure you subscribe. Um, I would love to get, see you guys here tomorrow when I do part two of this. It's gonna need a second coat, so I'll do that overnight. And then tomorrow we will get to glazing. And then I think next week maybe even tough coat. Um, I've done a couple of tough coating examples over kitchen cabinets if you wanna see those. Um, especially if you are starting your own kitchen project, we do recommend sealing with tough coat, which is what I'll be using to finish this project off too. Um, it's a durable tough coat, nice satin finish which is the look I'm going for for this piece. And if you haven't used it on furniture, this might be a good example. So stay tuned for that. Just gonna get in real quick. It's dried really quickly. It's not even coming up off for me, so which means it must be very warm in here. So that's kind of what we're working with. The glaze hasn't quite dried on the top, but maybe you can see nice oak or nice grain that we're going to be working with. Um, it's going to pop beautifully. I did sand as many of the rings I could out, but those might show up again. That's all right. So that is just the uh, part one of our video. This is the beginning of the project. I'll just get right down so you can see. Um, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for tomorrow when I'm going to be doing part two. Um, we're just going to be using the graphite glaze on the rest of the piece to darken it up. It's going to sit in the crevices and look beautiful. And I'm going to seal with tough coat later. All right, so I'm going to sign off. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Happy painting. If you have any questions about these products or how to get started on a project, you can always contact Country Sheet Paint. Um, we have a website, a chat, and even email on our Facebook page too. Um, and then don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great day.